Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from the Automation Blog and School. And in this episode of the Automation Minute, I want to talk about a reader's question. He was asking about the Micrologix 1400s real-time clock and how to use that to determine when a motor should come on or go off. And so, you know, the Micrologix 1400, you can't use the GSV or the SSV like you can in the Compact and Control Logics. That's just not how the Micrologix 1400 works. I mean, you typically use RS Logics Micro or 500 to program it. And, um, you know, unlike the Slick 503, 4, and 5, there's no real-time clock in the status file. It's actually in a function file, which I'll pull up right here. Okay, and you go to the RTC tab here, and there it is. Okay, there's your real-time clock. You can even set it from your computer if you want to. And um, so how do you get those values out into your... Uh, program so you can actually say hey is it past eight o'clock or before five o'clock and I want to run that motor um, well it's very easy I did it this way I just used some moved instructions so I move um, the hour into n70 the minute into n71 the second into n72 easy peasy now a lot of people don't know that PLC uh, real-time clocks are notorious for drifting right that depending on wild temperature swings you know it might be 100 degrees during the day and then 50 degrees at night. And so the clocks do tend to drift uh, maybe up to five minutes a month. That's all documented in your PLC's documentation. But um, uh, because of that, a lot of times people will create a, uh, a screen on their HMI so they can actually change the value of the clock. So if it's drifting, you know, five minutes a month, they can go in there and fix it. I know with the Panelview Plus, we use the global connections to um to actually take the eight the, P, the panel view plus's clock and write it down to the plc because the panel view plus's clock is more accurate it's more pc based clock than a plc based clock so in any case so you can do that you could write them down to the plc but how do you get that value back into the real-time clock in the plc itself and you think you can just do a move or a copy but you actually can't trust me i tried it wouldn't let me and uh, you actually have to use an instruction called the CPW. And this allows you to copy a word to another word that's a sub element of something else. Real interesting, right? If you want to know more about that, just click on the old CPW and press F1. But um, yeah, you can see here, I got the uh, N73 going to the hour, N74 going to the minute, and N75 going to the second. Now, this next part you don't have to do if you don't want, but I would, wouldn't, wouldn't uh, go without it. And that is to put limit tests in to make sure with the values you are writing to your clock are valid. Now, the clock should not take invalid numbers, right? That's just what the documentation says. But I always like to use limit tests in my code to make sure, just to make sure, you know, like valid values are coming from the HMI, okay? And so here you can see I'm making sure that the, uh, you know, the hour here is between 0 and 23, the minute here is between 0 and 59, and the second as well. And then I'm using a one shot because I don't want to write to this thing constantly. I mean, every memory area has a limited number of writes you can do to it. And I, I have no clue what the real time clock's limit is, but why, why have it write the time to it like a thousand times a second? That makes no sense. So I put a one shot in there. So when I toggle this bit, you know, if it passes all the limits, I get that one shot and I update the time. And uh, so that's it. So that answers that uh, reader's question. I hope you found this informative or at least entertaining. If you do, please consider giving us a like and a sub. And with that, I want to wish you all a very happy, safe, and healthy week. And until next time, my friends, peace.